Um, we have Anne Stone now, who's on her own home territory. Um, Anne is, works in uh, paleogenetics, ancient DNA, and the evolutionary history of diseases. And she faces a trade-off today by having the advantage of being on her own home territory, but having to run off straight after this talk to take care of some of her students who are in an exam situation. So, yes. Anne, thank you. And she's going to be talking about mycobacterium tuberculosis, origins and evolutionary history of a major pathogen. Thank you. Um, so I will be around in the afternoon after I finish teaching, but uh, if you have additional questions afterwards that you aren't able to ask. Um, so today I want to talk about some research that's uh, going on in my lab, um, looking at uh, the evolutionary history of tuberculosis. And um, in particular, we are interested in what the origins of tuberculosis are and really the patterning of diversity pre and post age of exploration. Um, and with a particular focus on the Americas. And that has turned out to be a very interesting story, and we're hoping to add uh, genomic data to the story fairly soon because we're very much interested in the question of how mycobacteria have adapted over time uh, as they jump from one species to another or as different strains interact. And also, um, with the in improvements in genetic analyses in ancient materials, we can even go and look at the host DNA to try to look at that side of the story as well. So what is tuberculosis? It's a disease of the lungs, um, typically, not always, uh, but today most cases are due to uh, inhalation through the respiratory route. However, the gastrointestinal route is also an important uh, route of infection. And it's a disease that's, that's caused by a number of different mycobacterial species, ecotypes, uh, there's debate about that. Um, but these include mycobacterium tuberculosis, um, this complex, uh, including mycobacterium tu tuberculosis, mycobacterium africanum, M. bovis, M. capre, M. microti, et cetera. It turns out that humans can, can and are infected by all of these, be infected by all of these, and the symptoms are, that are shown is the disease tuberculosis. It's treated in the same way. Uh, most humans tend to be infected by the classical M tuberculosis. So what are the origins of TB? Um, for a long time, it's been thought that mycobacterium tuberculosis evolved from Mycobacterium bovis. So we got it from cows during the process of old world cattle domestication. Uh, we have the first clear historical evidence for TB from China about 2700 BC and the first clear skeletal evidence from Italy and Egypt around 4000 to 4500 BC. Now if this is indeed the case, then one would expect with the colonization of the Americas about 15 to 20,000 years ago that um, basically you've got people, but we don't think that cows migrated as well. And so therefore in the Americas prior to European contact, we would not expect to see tuberculosis. However, um, one of my pesky collaborators, Jane Bykstra, uh, just kept finding cases of TB in the archaeological record, uh, she and others, and um, she was also involved in a study in 1994 that used new ancient DNA methods to target the IS-6110 repeat element that's found in the MTB complex. And they got a band, which was state of the art in 1994, it's like, yay, which basically says, yes, the TB complex is there. <laughs> Ta-da! Um, which is not so satisfying if you are interested in the evolutionary history of the pathogen, you want to know more. Um, but the methods at the time were not amenable to that. Now, um, parallel to this, we have increasing evidence and information from modern strains. So people um, in the clini clinical world were mostly interested in, is it something that causes TB or not? And you know, therefore, how do we then treat it? Um, but people began to start looking at the genetic diversity in the strains. Uh, and what they noticed was, uh, starting in 1998, uh, and then with Brochet et al. in 2002, 
is that, let's see if this shows up, yep. Okay, so here are these so-called animal strains, and you'll notice that they're more derived than the human strains. So this kind of put a uh, kink in the notion that cows gave us TB and actually suggest that we might have ultimately given it to them. So, uh, in the last few years, we've gotten a lot more genetic information about the diversity of M. tuberculosis strains. And this is work by Peter Small and Sebastian Gagneau and collaborators. Uh, and I want to point out a couple of things in this phylogeny. And you'll see the colors that you see in this phylogeny through the rest of the talk representing these lineages. So the first thing to point out here is that um, you have this group that is possibly less virulent. It does not, it has a set of genes that seem to make it grow a little more slowly perhaps, and these seem to be the, more, the older lineages. You'll also notice that the animal strains here in orange are nested within the West African, uh, two different West African lineages. The greatest diversity of strains is in Africa, so we think the origin is there. But today when we look at the animal strains, they're all nested within the human strains. So we don't actually know what the origin of tuberculosis is. Now we also see this group here, which has this deletion that appears to make them uh, more virulent. And uh, these are the strains including the Beijing strain and others that are spreading today. Uh, and so um, Gagneau et al. and others have suggested that those strains may have really taken off um, with the Neolithic transition and increase in population size. So our questions have been, um, what was going on in the Americas? Is it the case that perhaps this old Asian strain that's pink maybe came over with people? Um, by the way, the timing on this has ranged from very recent with Neolithic all the way back to three million years for the origins of tuberculosis or the time when it jumped into humans. So there's a huge span, or there was until recently a huge span there. Uh, or it was the lesions that we see in the Americas pre-contact caused by something else in Kansas eye and something else. Uh, and then, with the age of exploration, um, you have basically the movement of these more virulent strains around the world. And so today in the Americas, what you see is the European strains. In big cities, of course, you see worldwide constellations of strains that reflect the people who have emigrated. So what we've done is um, sampled skeletal remains with evidence of tuberculosis. These have very characteristic lesions. Uh, keep in mind that the vast majority of people who develop tuberculosis never develop skeletal lesions. So these are people who have survived with the disease chronically for a long time. Uh, and then we grind up bone and extract DNA. We have a clean room here at ASU that's a class 10,000 clean room. My grad students have to constantly shower and wear this garb, so they're a very squeaky clean bunch. Uh, and we work under these conditions to really reduce the possibility of contamination. Um, so our strategy initially is to extract DNA and use quantitative PCR to test for uh, three different mark sets of markers. The first is IS-6110, actually the first here is IS-1081, which is found in five copies in all members of the MTB complex. Uh, IS-6110, which is found in 0 to 27 copies, and then RPOB, which is a, a single-copy gene that's found um, in many bacteria, but we can use very specific uh, probes and primers to target it. So when we do this, um, we first did this using a probe that we call RPOB1, and we realized, uh, we were very excited because we had 31 that tested positive, like, yeah. Yay, excuse me. <laughs> um, and, uh, but then we sort of started to notice that this particular marker was perhaps much more positive than it should be, given that it's a single gene marker. And one of the real challenges with ancient DNA is that when you're extracting DNA from a bone, you're extracting all the DNA from the bone. 
And mycobacteria are also found in soil and water, non-pathogenic forms. So we have to worry about whether or not our assays pick those things up. Um, and so we had designed this in about 2005. We went back to GenBank to get more um, data from all the accumulating strains. And we found that new species had been described, some of which might be giving uh, a reaction for that. So we redesigned the probe, uh, which is now called RPOB2, and you can see that it's much more in line with the other evidence. So then, if you disregard RPOB1, um, we have 12 samples that were positive. So the next part of our strategy is to use uh, capture um, to pull out the DNA of interest, so specifically the MTB genome. We first use uh, a capture enrichment that is a um, in solution hybridization for five genes and sequence those usually on the MySeq. Uh, the second thing that we do in samples that work well for the five gene capture is we use an array enrichment um, to target the entire non repetitive genome. We've made sort of this ancestral genome that puts all those deletions back in. Uh, and we've tiled that on two arrays. Um, it takes up one and a half. The rest of the array, we, use, we put some M. Kansasi and M. avium, which also can cause um, variants of tuberculosis. So we reported last fall um, our first genome sequences from three samples from Peru. Um, since then, we, um, I'd hope to be able to give you a hint about these. We just got these additional samples uh, came off the high seek about a week or two ago, but they're still in the pipeline. So I email Johannes Krause, who I'm collaborating with every day, and I'm like, any, wor any word? <laughs> what, what, what's, what's the results? Um, but I can tell you what we found previously. So all three of these samples happen to be from the same valley in Peru, from three different archaeological sites that date to about 800 to 1,000 years ago. It's a very dry region. The preservation is amazing. This is one of the burials. And what you can see is that when you look at these five gene capture, um, you get, this is just four that, no, it's all five. Um, you get pretty good coverage, so this is why we put those on the array. And we also see the very characteristic DNA damage patterns, um, which is sort of U-shaped. And this is reflecting the overhangs that tend to be deaminated. So here were our results, and because we had radiocarbon dated samples, we were able to calibrate the timing of the tree. And what we were very surprised to find is that the Peruvian uh, tuberculosis genomes cluster with M. pinnipedi. So these are TB strains found in southern hemisphere pinnipeds, seals and sea lions. Uh, so that was quite unexpected. Um, so what we propose is sort of the overall view here, is we have an origin of TB in Africa um, somewhere in the neighborhood of three to 6,000 years ago, so much more recent than we had originally thought. Uh, we have no idea what the source is. We then have the spread of these more basal lineages, a jump back into animals at some point and somewhere, uh, then a new lineage which seems to be basal to the more virulent ones arises, the more virulent lineages arise. You have the jump from an animal into pinnipeds. They swim across the ocean about 1,000 to 1,300 years ago. Give it back to us, thank you very much, and um, perhaps have spread it through the Americas. So currently we're really targeting, were there multiple jumps? Did the pathogen sort of show evidence of readaptation to humans? And we do see five non-synonymous SNPs that differentiate the, the human strains from the M. pinnipedi strains. Did it spread via human-to-human -human contact into North America? And so we are expecting new samples that are uh, actually from North America, so I'm very excited. Um, and did, the other possibility, of course, is did TB reach the Americas before 1492 through other means? Um, and I'm very excited because I'm going to be getting some cheek swabs from Antarctic seals shortly. Uh, but then we think after Columbus, these more virulent strains were, uh, were the ones that were placed. So this is uh, the final slide showing you kind of what we think happened in terms of the evolutionary process. Um, so with a replacement event 
And with that, I will thank my many collaborators.